morning, everyone. Good morning. A lot to digest this morning. The announcements. God is good. We worship a triune God. <clears throat> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is uh, three persons perfectly united in, as one God. He has many names. Uh, his names describe his character. When uh, Moses went up on the mountain and he asked God, when the people asked me who sent me, what should I tell them? And God said, I am that I am. And that is his name. Hebrews, in Hebrew they say Yahweh. That it's become sort of <clears throat> Latinized <clears throat> and it's now Jehovah. Jehovah means the Lord. <clears throat> to describe God's character, they use Jehovah plus a describer, uh, such as a Jehovah Sabaoth, which means a uh, Lord of hosts, that sort of thing. A beautiful example of that is in, found in the 23rd Psalm. And I'd like to go over that with you uh, quickly uh, to give you some examples of how this works. He is Jehovah Rohi, which is the Lord of the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He is Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. <clears throat> he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He is Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. He is Jehovah Tiskenu. The Lord is our righteousness. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. He is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. He is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord is my healer. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of Jehovah forever. That is Jehovah Nisai. The Lord is our banner. You get the idea <clears throat> how <clears throat> those are descriptive. I want to talk more about uh, Jehovah Shema. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, we need to brush up on our history. A little ancient history and some modern history. For the ancient history, we have to go back to the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament. The book of Ezekiel pronounces judgment on Israel and the surrounding nations. In the year 606 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, began deporting Jews from Jerusalem to Babylon. <clears throat> he did this in a couple different groups. Later on in 597, he, a, a, a group went to Babylon and included a 25-year-old guy named Ezekiel. And he was taken to a place called Tel Abib, which is a town, or a village rather, about 100 miles roughly south of uh, the actual city of Babylon. And he lived there quietly with his wife for five years. In his fifth year, he was called to be a prophet of God. <clears throat> and his quiet life ended. The book of Ezekiel is interesting in uh, the methods that God used to get people's attention. He have Ezekiel lay out on the street, first on his left side, then on his right side. And they all had... It all had uh, meaning for the people at that time, and we'd get their attention so that he could prophesy uh, as God uh, led him. He began prophesying about the uh, destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, and this was a full six years before the actual destruction took place. It was a difficult time for the captives. They had this idea that someday they would go back to the Jerusalem that they left and everything would be as it was before. 
But Ezekiel described the utter ruin of the city and the sinfulness of the people that led to God's judgment. He prophesied about the horror of the siege of Jerusalem and its ultimate destruction. And then he prophesied about the destruction of the surrounding nations and their uh, pagan practices. People were heartbroken. Uh, Their beautiful Jerusalem would be gone. There was nothing to go back to. But then Ezekiel started prophesying about the rebuilding of Jerusalem and a return home. And he described the city in detail. And the people were encouraged because they saw the grace and the mercy of our God. They saw his loving kindness and his forgiveness. In the end, Ezekiel describes the, the rebuilt city and the return home from the captivity. In the very last verse of the book of Ezekiel says, And the name of the city from that time on will be, The Lord is there, Jehovah Shammah. Israelites went through a terrible time as they remembered the way things used to be. And that's our ancient history. For modern history, we don't have to go back so far. Three years ago, three years ago this month, Calvary Church was uh, dealt a, a heavy blow when our pastor, who is beloved by many, left after 28 years. There are some in our congregation that still mourn that loss, uh, remembering the way things used to be. And then COVID hit. We couldn't have church at all for a while. And then we just went online for, for a few Sundays. When we did come back, it was really tough to do ministry uh, because of the COVID restrictions, because people were afraid to gather. Some people left the church and never returned. As a church, we were crushed, downhearted. Some believe that we've never fully recovered from that. I personally believe that spiritual warfare was amped up to a level that we hadn't seen before, and we simply weren't prepared for it. We felt kind of like the Jews in captivity, wishing things would go back the way they were knowing that they never would. We had grown complacent. But you know, God's faithful. We pushed through with his help. And then he blessed us with a new pastor. And we praised God for him. And we felt this heavy burden lifted from our shoulders. And we thank God for his mercy and his grace towards us. But apparently God isn't done with us yet. Because here we go again. Our pastor, who's beloved by many, has left. And there will be grieving for that loss. What are we going to do now? How will we deal with the uncertainty that's sure to come up? Will we see another increase in in spiritual warfare directed against us? I don't know. We don't have answers just yet. But I do know this. In the midst of this trial, there is good news. And the good news is that, like the rebuilt Jerusalem of old, we can stand back and we can look at Calvary Church and we can say, Jehovah Shema, God is there. God is here in this place. God is at work at Calvary. We're the body of Christ and we cannot be shaken if we place our faith in Him. I expect the coming weeks and months here at Calvary to be challenging, maybe even more than challenging. We all have a lot of work to do. Each and every one of us is going to have to get up out of the pew and use our gifts and talents to edify the body the way the Bible tells us we're supposed to do. 
Each one of us is going to have to become a true prayer warrior just to keep things going here. And why? Why bother? Because pastor or no pastor, there are still people in our community that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There are still kids out there that have never heard the name of Jesus other than a swear word. Our ministry doesn't stop because we don't have a pastor. We have to continue to gain and grow disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we just don't know why God does things or why he allows things to happen. We just have to trust that he has a plan and that his plan is working out exactly the way he wants it to. And we need to faithfully follow him. Now Satan, the evil one, he might think he's won a battle here. But he can't defeat my God. My God is here. He's at work at Calvary Church of Weberville. Jesus said, Truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I with them. We are gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ. God is here with us. Some might see this uh, moment as an opportunity to disrupt things or maybe even uh, destroy this body of believers. But the Bible says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. We need to remember, God will never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Are you worried about what's going to happen in the future? We don't need to be afraid of the future. 2 Thessalonians 3, 3 says, But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. When it comes to Calvary Church, Jehovah Shammah, God is there. And we're gathered here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to worship Him and to serve Him. And not only Him, but to serve one another. And serve our community as well. Pastor Scott is not here anymore. As of this week, Pastor John isn't here anymore. But God never left. God is here with us. And we are still here because we love the Lord Jesus Christ. We come here to worship Him and to serve Him and to fellowship with other believers. I know in my heart that God has something wonderful and good for us just down the road. Now I mentioned last week that uh, a spiritually mature Christian is prayerful. If ever there was a time for prayer here at Calvary, this is it. Now is the time for prayer. We need to pray for one another. We need to pray that the hearts of those grieving the loss of our pastors will be comforted. We need to pray that our ministries will continue and be successful in reaching the lost and growing disciples. We need to pray for our youth and children's programs that the kids will look forward to coming here and that they'll respond to the gospel. We need to pray that people will step up to fill vacant uh, leadership positions. We need to pray for our elders as they lead us in the future. Being an elder is a, a terrible responsibility. And we need to ask the Lord to provide just the right pastor at just the right time. And we need to ask for patience to wait on his perfect timing. And we need to pray for unity in the church. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three persons perfectly united as God. And the Bible tells us that we, as believers, are united in one body. The Apostle Paul was pretty tough on the Corinthian church for their lack of unity. 
they were split over who would follow who, and he gave them what for. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, aren't you living like people of the world? When one of you says, I am a follower of Paul, another says, I follow Apollos, aren't you acting like people of the world? After all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believe the good news. Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. We need to pray for the unity of this local church. No more Scott, no more John, Christ alone. Romans 15.5 says, May the God who gave, uh, who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. We should all be of one mind, united in our love for the Lord Jesus, working together to to serve our community and to serve one another. Let's be forgiving. Let's be loving. Let's be gracious. Let's put other people before ourselves and let Jesus Christ rule in our lives. Let's serve Him with glad spirits and willing hearts because we know that whatever happens, God is in this place and He'll make a way for this church to succeed. Would you pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, uh, we just place ourselves and in, in this church into your hands. We know that some of us are going to be hurt because the pastor left. People will be confused, frightened, maybe even angry. We ask that you give comfort and strength to each of us. We would ask that you would instill in our hearts a desire to draw closer to you and to one another, that we might serve you better and better. Unite us in the name of Jesus so that others will know that you are here in this place. We want to pray for Pastor John as he moves on to other things. We pray for rapid healing of his ankle and provision for his family. And we just thank you for his time here at Calvary. We praise you, Lord. We thank you. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.